In this video, we're going to take a look at the flip cards widget in the all new Adobe Captivate. Okay, so this widget is actually kind of exciting for me for the last uh, year or two. I've been developing my own flip card interaction using Adobe Captivate Classic, and I'm pretty happy with it. And of course, it involves uh, variables and advanced actions and can be a little cumbersome to work with. Um, however, with the new Adobe Captivate, we have a flip card widget. So I'm eager to try it out and see if it will be a great replacement for what I've done in the past. Let's take a look. To add a flip card widget to your slide, you simply click on the widget icon in your toolbar and select the first widget, which is cards. First thing I'm going to do is replace the default text for the heading here with my own. At this point, we can take care of any alignment or spacing issues. So I'm pretty happy with how this is set up. Sometimes I'll prefer to go down to about 80%, but I find that the flip cards become very uh, tall and narrow. And uh, so I prefer to stick with the 92%. It keeps them fairly wide, especially if I'm using all four of the flip cards. Now, this is something I wouldn't mind giving as feedback to the, the folks at Adobe. This would be really nice to see uh, maybe a few more flip cards. Not a lot, because obviously that tall and narrow problem, you know, would perpetuate if I had more cards. But perhaps right from the get-go, we could have it wrapped to another row of cards, um, you know, in, in such cases where there's not enough room for five, six, seven, what have you. This will, this will work for this particular content that I'm working on. Um, if you have more content, you might want to consider one of the other widgets here. So this works a lot like uh, the other widgets in that you can preview the front or back at any time and customize the content accordingly. Let's start with the front here. In this case, um, I'm not going to change the design options, but just be aware of the fact that you can go with other layouts if you prefer. Um, I kind of like this one actually, but, uh, but I'm going to stick with the default for right now. Like all blocks in the new Adobe Captivate, there are components within those blocks that you can customize, right? So we've already customized the title here and uh, we can turn on or off uh, any of the items that you see. Now, to determine which items we're going to include, you will have to toggle between front and back. So on the front, I'm going to have the image and I'm going to have the title, but I don't want any content on this. And uh, I think we'll keep the icon. I think it's uh, beneficial to have that icon there. Uh, you can change the alignment of many of the objects within the component section. So if you prefer to have the icon on the left or perhaps centered, you can do that. I kind of like centered there in this case here. So first of all, I have a series of images I'd like to use for the, the front of the cards here. We'll update the titles in a moment here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. You could uh, access the Adobe Captivate Asset Store to get free images. I've got some images on my computer that I'm going to use here. So I'm going to select one of those and pop it in there. Now, right off the bat, here's a problem with images in the Adobe Captivate 12 interface. It has no idea that these are images that uh, if I double click on, you can see that the character in my images is way off to the left here. So that's where this edit image option is important. So I'm going to drag my selection handles until my character is in frame and click on save. So there's my first front of card. Let's go ahead and edit the title here. This is going to be understanding the problem. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the icon to replace the image for card number two. I also have that on my downloads here. We'll use this image here. And like before, I'm going to have to double click on that and just reframe it 
so that we are seeing our character here. Press save and I'll go ahead and type in the title of that card. I'll click on card number three's image and I will also get this for the images that I have in mind here. Again, we'll have to double click on this and again, we'll just, you know, crop it so that we're going to see our character full frame there. That looks good. And this uh, topic here is carrying out the plan and we'll edit our fourth card. Okay. I've double clicked on these images, but if you want, you can right click and select edit image to change those to get into the edit mode for this. So again, we'll just reframe that so that our guy is right in the shot there and And looking back there. So I'm pretty happy with how these look. I like the icon there. Okay, so now we're going to look at the back side of these cards and we're going to customize them as well. If we go back to the components for the uh, interaction itself, to the widget itself, we can decide what we're going to show here. I don't think I need an image on the back side, so I'm going to turn those all off. We're going to keep the title and I think I'm going to uncheck subtitle and we'll just have the body here. So in this case here, I will populate all my titles. Okay, so obviously we're seeing one problem here. Typical with e-learning designer developers, you have to deal with this sort of issue and uh, you could change the font size. Although I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to change that to understand the problem. And I think that should work well. So here's the text I have for that first one there. And notice what happened when I pasted in that longer text for the fourth step. It actually increased my slide size and therefore the actual widget size as well to accommodate that. This will be interesting to look at. Um, in, in responsive design to see what, what happens here. But this is pretty much good to go. Let's take a look at some of the settings in the Properties Inspector that we haven't yet looked at. I'll click into the widget again. So we have everything set up. There are some things that we can do to customize the appearance here. If you don't want a solid color in the background, in other words, if your slide has a different background because it's the design that you're using throughout your course, you can allow that to see, be seen through and turn off the solid color for the widget itself. With the cards though, I do find that you can go in and do some nice things to it here. So the solid color of course can literally be what you change your color of your cards to. Um, you can choose the border in fact, if you take the border away, um, you know, it really helps to give you a little bit more room. And uh, I'm not a big fan of drop shadows these days. Um, so you can turn that off as well, if you wish. And uh, under settings here, this is probably something you'll leave turned on by default. It's move to next slide when the widget completes. And while I don't, I'm not crazy about that description, I think I would rather it say disable the next button until all the items have been clicked or whatever, something to that effect there. I'll let the marketing folks at Adobe mull that over if they're watching this video. But you know, here we have something that I think looks pretty good. We can go back to the front and take a look here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. One of the things that you can do as well, if you decide, is that you can increase or decrease the corner radius of your cards. So, you know, if you are not a crazy fan about rounded corners, you could actually set it for zero and it will make them square, as you can see here and on the back as well. Um, or you can increase it to a much greater uh, corner radius than what was there by default. So, in fact, one of the interesting things about Captivate is that you can set a corner radius for any one of the corners here. So you could actually have, 
you know, the upper right hand corner would be squared off and then the corner radius be, you know, something extreme right there. And, you know, maybe zero on the other ones there. So just one corner has a rounded uh, shape to it. it. You know, again, there's a lot of choices within um, these widgets to customize them. So pretty happy with the way this looks right now. I'm actually thinking of, it does need a border, but I think it needs a very small border on all sides there. I think that looks better, right? So let's just look at the front. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Let's do a preview now. Uh, keep in mind that not only can you preview in your browser, but you can generate a device preview. And as long as your mobile device is on the same network, you can point its camera at the QR code here and preview what this will look like on your mobile device. Okay, let's do the normal preview so we can see it on our desktop here. One of the things to remember is that the play bar, I think I would probably disable the play bar in this case here, um, but you can move the play bar uh, to different spots on your screen here. So uh, if you wish to move the play bar to the top left or bottom left, wherever you wish. And of course, let's go ahead and see this in action here. So obviously, uh, because of the amount of content, we're having to scroll down to see our back and next buttons. But of course, that's what responsive design is all about. So now we can see all the information here. And of course, our navigation controls are opened up and we can move on to the next lesson in this course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, Hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.